Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on creating a simple file upload in Laravel. In this video, we'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process of building a file upload functionality using the powerful Laravel framework. Whether you are a beginner or have some experience with Laravel, this tutorial will provide you with a solid foundation for handling file uploads in your web applications. So let's dive right into the project. Now the first thing that we want to do is we need to go to the terminal and we want to create a model. So we're going to say php artisan make model. And the name of the model that we want to create will be file. And then we'll also add minus m, which will create a migration. Then once we hit on enter, then you will see the, the file model and the database migration has been created successfully. So first we need to go inside the database migration. And inside here, we're going to add another attribute. So the first one is going to be a string, and this will hold the name of the file. And I'm going to make this nullable, which means that this attribute name can hold the value of zero. So then I'm going to add another attribute, and this one will be named file underscore path. Now, as you might guess by the name, this attribute will store the path where the uploaded file is stored. All right, so this means that we are done with the migration file. So now what we are going to do is we're gonna to go to the model and inside here, I'm going to make the attributes name and file path fillable. So I'm gonna create protected fillable variable. And then I'm going to assign this to an array. And this array will contain the attribute name and the attribute file path. All right, so now that we have altered the model as well, we're going to terminal and we're going to migrate the changes. And once we click on migrate, then you will see a new table has been created. So if we go inside the database and refresh the database, then you will see that we have a new table named files. And once we open that, you will see our attributes that we have added inside the migration. So as next, what we're going to do is we're going to create a controller and we're going to say PHP artisan make controller. And we will name this controller file upload. So let's hit on enter. And now let's go to the controller file. And once we are here, we're going to import the model. So we're going to say use app backslash models backslash file. All right, so now that we have model implemented, we're going to create a function inside the class controller. So we're going to say public function. And I'm going to name this function create form. Then with this function, we're going to return a view and the view that we're going to return will be named file upload, which we are going to create later. And then we're going to create another function named file upload. And then in order to access the request data or the, the input data, we're going to pass the request inside the parameter. And I'm going to call the request instance rec. Then inside the method body, I am going to validate the whole request that we are passing. So for that, I'm going to call the validate method. And then inside the validate method, I'm going to specify which fields we are going to validate. So I'm going to validate the element with the name file. And I'm going to set this equal to required. And then I'm going to use the MIMES rule, which is going to specify which file type we are going to upload. And the file types that we are going to allow are CSV, text, and PDF. And then I'm going to set the maximum file size to 2048 kilobytes. And then once I'm done with the validation, I'm going to create a variable named file model, and I'm going to set this equal to the model instance. Then after that, I'm going to create an if statement that will check if the request contains file. And if that is true, I'm going to create a file name and this file name will be assigned to the 
name of the file that we have uploaded. But before the name, we're going to add the current time, separated by an underscore. And then I'm going to get the original file name by using the get original name method. Now, once I'm done with that, I'm going to create a new variable named file path, and I'm going to set this equal to the file path where we are going to store our variable. So first, I'm going to access the file itself. So I'm going to say rec file, and inside the parameter, I'm going to type file. And then I'm going to call the store as method. And inside this method, we can pass three parameters. So the first parameter is the folder where we are going to store our file and the second parameter will be the name of the file that we are going to store so we have created a file name variable for that and in the last parameter we are going to specify the disk which represents the disk on which the file should be stored then in the next line i'm going to call the file model variable and on this model i'm going to call the name property and i'm going to set this equal to the exact value that we have assigned to the file name which is the timestamp separated by underscore and then we are getting the original name from the request. Then in the next line, I'm going to call the file model again. And this time I'm going to use the file path property. And I'm going to set this equal to the storage folder followed by the file path. Then in the next line, I'm going to call the file model again. And this time I'm going to call the save method on the file model and the save method will basically create a new model instance. Then in the next line, I'm going to use the back method on the return, which will return the user back to the previous page. And after the back function, I'm going to add the with function, which will return the success message. And the success message will be file has been uploaded successfully. Then I'm going to call another with method and this time I'm going to return a variable file and I will set this variable equal to the file name. All right, so now we are done creating the controller. So what we are gonna do as next is creating the file upload blade file. But first I'm going to unfold these folders in order to have a better overview. And then I will head over to the resources, views, and inside here I will create a new file named file-upload.blade.php. And then inside here, I am going to type exclamation mark in order to create an HTML snippet. Now inside the head, I am going to add a bootstrap CDN. And for that, I'm gonna to have to go to the browser and I will search for stack path bootstrap CDN. And then I'm going to go for this one here. And then I'm going to copy this line of code. Once I've copied that, I will head back to the VS Code and I'm going to paste it inside the head element. All right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the title to Laravel File Upload. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to add a div inside the body and this div will hold the class container. Additionally, I will add another class named nt-5. And then inside the div, I'm going to add a form. And this form will have an action set equal to a route. And the route will be something like file upload. Now inside the form, I'm also going to add a method attribute, and this will be set equal to a post method. And then I'm going to set an ang type attribute to multipart slash form data. Now what this does, it will ensure that the data is encoded and transmitted correctly. Then inside the form, I'm going to add an h3 element first, and this element will have a class of text-center and empty-5. And inside this header, we're going to print upload file in Laravel. And right under the header, we're going to use the CSRF protection to protect the form from forgery attacks. And then I'm going to create an if statement that will check if the file upload process was successfully. And we will do that by retrieving the value of the success key from the session data. And then we're going to assign this to a message variable. So I'm going to say message is equal to session 
get success. And then inside the if statement body, I'm going to create a div that will contain the class alert and alert dash success. And inside this div, I'm going to create a strong tag. And inside the strong tag, I'm going to print out the message. Then under this if statement, I'm going to create another if statement. And this one will count the errors. So we're going to say if count errors is bigger than zero. Then we're going to create a div that will have the class alert and alert dash danger. Then inside this div, I'm going to create an unordered list element. And inside here, I'm going to create a for each loop that is going to loop over the errors. So this is going to be errors all. And I'm going to say for each errors all as error. Then inside the for each body, I'm going to list the errors using list element. Then you have to make sure that you have end if added. And right under the end if, we are going to create the UI for the file upload. So we're going to create a div. And this div will have the class of custom dash file. Then inside this div, we're going to have to create an input field. And the type attribute will be set equal to file. The same is going to be for name. So we're going to set name to file as well. And we're going to add a class. And the class will be set equal to custom-file-input. And then we're also going to create an ID that will be set equal to choose file. And then right under the input, I'm going to create a label. And the for attribute will be set equal to choose file. And then I'm going to create a class that will be set equal to custom-file-label. And then inside the label, I'm going to simply type select file. Then what is left to do is to create a button that will trigger the file upload. So right under the div, we're going to say button. And the type of this button will be a submit. And then I'm going to add a name attribute. And the name for this will be submit as well. Additionally, I'm going to assign multiple classes for this, like btn, btn-primary, btn plug and md-4. Then inside this button, we are going to print upload files. Now, once we are done creating the blade file, we need to go to the web.php. Instead here, we're going to need to add the file upload controller first. So we're going to say use app backslash stp backslash controllers and then the file upload. Then we're going to create our first route where we're going to use a get method. So we're going to say route colon colon get and we're going to set the URI to upload dash file. Then we're going to call the controller class. So we're going to say file upload colon colon class. And then we're going to call the create form method, which is going to return the view. So this will basically mean that every time we get the upload dash file, we will return the view that we have created. And then I'm going to create another route. And for this route, I'm going to use the post method instead of the get. And we're going to have the same endpoint, but instead of the create form, I'm going to use the file upload method. And then I'm going to call the name method to assign this route a name. And the name that I'm going to assign to this route will be file upload. All right, so now that I'm done, I'm going to finally test the app. So let's head back to the browser. And inside here, I'm going to type the upload dash file. Then hit an enter. And as you can see, now we are getting the user interface where we can upload our files, but this is not looking as it should. So I guess I have to apply some CSS. So let's go back to the VS code and inside the blade file. So inside the head, I'm going to add a style element. And inside here, I'm going to select the container class first. And here I'm going to apply a max width to 500 pixels. And then I'm going to select another element like DL, OL, and UL. To these elements, I'm going to apply a margin of zero. And I'm going to apply zero to padding as well. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to set the list style to none. So now let's go back to the web app. 
and refresh the page. And as you can see, this is looking a bit more compact, like I want. If we would were to upload a file, we would have to click on Browse. Then you can select your file from your computer that you want to upload, so and click on Open. And then click on Upload Files. And we are running into a problem. And it seems like we are using the wrong method to get the original name. So I guess we have to copy this one here. And now let's go back to the controller. And here I'm going to replace these two methods with the one that we have copied. And now let's go back, refresh the page, and click on Browse to select a file, and we click on Open, Upload Files, and as you can see we're getting the file has been uploaded successfully. Now if we go to the database and refresh the page, and as you can see here we have a new database record with the name which is the time separated by an underscore and the original name. And as you can see here, we have the file path as well, which is storage, uploads, and the file name itself. So that's it. Thank you for joining us in this tutorial on creating a customized file upload system with Laravel. We hope you find it valuable and gain the knowledge to build personalized file upload solutions for your projects. Leave a like and a subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I hope to see you next time.